Let's talk about one particular company, Signity Technologies reported what was an improvement in its Q1 performance, even as margins contracted slightly on account of increments. It also managed to add six clients in Q1 FI24. The company in its Q1 conference call indicated that they are seeing some green shoots in terms of new deals and this will likely be signed into contracts over the next two to three quarters. To discuss this and more, we have Krishnan Venkacharya, who is the CFO of the company, joining in. Mr. Krishnan, hi. Welcome to the show. Well, let's start with the dollar revenue growth in Q1, which was up around 2.7% on a Q1-Q basis. This was in a quarter where a lot of your peers reported a decline as well. What resulted in the Q1-Q momentum that you've seen? Uh, good morning, uh, good afternoon, and uh, thanks for uh, hosting me. Uh, uh, just to answer the question, in terms of the dollar growth, which went up from uh, 52.1 to 53.5 million, I think this has been a, uh, of course, we did anticipate a slightly uh, higher growth, but I think uh, it's more to do on a continuous support in terms of the long-term contracts, what we have signed, and especially with the top 20 clients. So that as a growth has continued, we have not seen any kind of a pushback in those set of clients. That is predominantly the reason. However, while we have seen delays in the RFP cycle when it runs through in terms of the closures, that is where we gave a cautious outlook in terms of the uh, next two quarters or so, probably including the Q1 and Q2, probably. Yes, these are the main reasons. So Q2 and Q3, you're cautious. Does that mean okay. there will be no revenue growth, flat revenue growth or decline or at the same 2 to 3% kind of growth? Uh, I, we have uh, projected very clearly, uh, and also in the last uh, uh, interview, we made it very clear that we'll assimilate things and come back at the end of uh, Q1. As it stands today, that while we have uh, 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 been very uh, optic and optimistic for the year, uh, it was about two quarters back that we'll be able to do uh, in 2024 FI is uh, in terms of uh, a high teen growth or uh, slightly at the edge, uh, uh, which is slightly on the higher side. But probably we'll do a double-digit growth, uh, which we feel could be anywhere in the region of about uh, 12 to 14 percent. So if you look at the cascading effect of that on a quarterly basis, while we started the quarter with about 2 3 percent, this trend should remain for the next this quarter. And then the coming quarters moving forward, I think we are expecting a, some amount of ramping up happening in Q3 and Q4. Okay. Well, just talking about your clients, while you've added around six clients in the previous quarter, it is lower than the 12 that you added in the quarter before that. So what happened uh, or what are the client metrics currently like? Uh, why was there a lower addition and what can you guide on? There are two things to this, basically, if you look at the strategy per se, basically, is that our net new, in terms of focus on a net new as a strategy over the last year, which we introduced, is that to nurture and grow or probably over the last six quarters to eight quarters is that to nurture the existing set of clients and uh, the new clients we have set up parameters for ourselves very clearly that will not accept clients anything less than 500 million five hundred thousand dollars will not accept any client which is uh, less than six months of assignment or so we tried that out vigorously clearly so i wouldn't say that there has been a set of clients which you have let go and things like that in terms of the RFE or new proposals, but I think as a combination as a strategy flip through and also the market uh, uh, per se was tough because the deal cycle closures were taking a longer iteration than what we anticipated. So we feel that it's a temporary phenomenon. The current trend what we see probably as we are sitting on uh, August 23rd or so is that we see a lot of encouraging uh, movements in the RFP and the bigger pipeline which we have. So we are confident that the wins are going to come through moving forward Q3, Q4. You will see the effect of that very clearly in terms of the wins coming through. So there are two, four, just to sum it up, there are two fold strategy very clearly. One is that we want to do uh, nurturing and uh, uh, growth of existing accounts, especially with the digital engineering focus coming through. We wanted to cross sell and upsell digital engineering and all our uh, digital assurance side wherever we are doing. And that is proving to be successful. Second is that we have set a parameter to raise the bar in terms of what is that with respect to the client additions which we need to do. And it is in a long term view, if you look at it, basically, if uh, my top 30, 35 clients can contribute 60 percent of the revenue, I think uh, that stores the sickiness in the business and predictability. So we are in the right path, I would say. So I'm not really concerned about the uh, uh, number of clients what we close. Yeah. Uh, you said you're going to accept new clients only if the deal value is more than 500,000. And they're giving you six months worth of work, right? The Absolutely. tenure is. 
Okay, yeah. so the deal value is to be 500,000 plus. Uh, and you want yeah. your top 30, 35 clients to contribute 65% of your revenues. Yeah. What is it currently? Currently, my top 20 clients contribute about 51%. And if you look at it, oh. about close to uh, the top 30 clients, we are there at about close to 75% or so. The spread is there. We're just trying to shrink that up and trying to see that how best we can penetrate deep into each client. So you want to bring down your revenue, con uh, your client concentration of the top uh, clients? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to create more stickiness within the client, offering him a bucket of services very clearly with respect to, especially when I have a digital foray. So I want to offer him a bucket of services. Mm -hmm. And the ambition is basically to get there to see that how much of line share which I can gather from the client so that I'm, I'm, I become uh, indispensable in the uh, uh, in these times, basically. Okay, well, that indispensability hopefully will come in at higher margins as well. Uh, Mr. Oh, Krishnan, yes. just absolutely. talking about... Yeah, absolutely. I think I can clear the apprehensions clearly is that while the investments on the digital engineering side is continuing to happen and we have done a heavy investments over the last uh, uh, year or so, I think uh, we have planning to basically to push ahead more in terms of digital engineering, which currently yields also as a slightly higher margin comparing to the quality engineering side. So we are confident that it will yield. And just to give so us when you say higher, slightly higher margins, what does it compare at in terms of the average margins that you do generate? Yeah, let me put it out this way that my offshore on-site margins were uh, over around 33% uh, currently with respect to the quality uh, engineering side. And when I do my uh, Offshore, I land at about close to 55%, but I think that mix is slightly changing when I'm going for uh, digital, basically, I get about offshore at about 62%, 63%, and I get about close to 38%, 39% on the on-site margin for the digital engineering side, and we are trying to improvise on those metrics as well and uh, give a push to that. So definitely in the long run, we are going to achieve a slightly higher EBITDA in terms of uh, uh, the business as we start kicking in the digital engineering business. Uh, Mr. Venkatachari, thank you very much uh, for joining in. That's uh, Signity Tech still eyeing uh, 12 to 14 percent top line growth. It's slightly lower than what they were hoping for perhaps a few months back, which was high teens growth, but still confident about a double digit growth. We will slip it.